So most people who get into the custom keyboard scene start with something like a 75% or a TKL, which while more compact than a full size, still retains a lot of functionality. Taking a step deeper, many who don't need the function row but need arrow keys lean towards the 65% layout. Even farther, you'd get into 60% territory, with beautiful symmetry and a compact footprint. But what the heck is this? Hey guys, I'm Simulator Tech, and today I'll be building the Akko ACR Top 40, a 40% acrylic top-mounted keyboard from Akko. The keyboard itself is so tiny, like it's literally adorable. It's very lightweight, and the huge fillets on the top case give the board a cute, round aesthetic. Alright, let's take it apart. First of all, we have the top case. It's got those super rounded top edges and holes for the plate and bottom case to screw in. Next up is the bottom case. It has a daughter board screwed in and a silicone dampener which should reduce case reverb and give the board some much needed weight. Here is the polycarb plate. It has no flex cuts which I'm super happy to see, and the nubs used to screw into the top case have these little like sock gasket type things. This board utilizes a mounting system that's kind of a hybrid between a top mount and a gasket mount. The plate screws into the top case making it a top mount, while gaskets around the screws make the typing experience a bit softer and causes the assembly to act a little bit more like a gasket mount. Overall pretty cool stuff. Between the plate and PCB is a layer of foam. It's not your standard pour on plate foam which is dense and soft, but it's like this light, flimsy styrofoam -y thingy. I think maybe they wanted to keep the plate foam to help users push the switches into the flexible polycarp plate while keeping the sound more open, but that's just a guess. Of course, we have the all too common PE foam for those of you who like that sound signature. Personally, I'm not using it since I want that nice top mount sound, but it's there if you want it. Finally, we have the PCB. It has south facing hot swap sockets with perky RGB and support for screw and stabs. It's 1.6 millimeters thick and it has no flex cuts. The layout is locked with a split spacebar, 2U left shift and backspace, and a couple other quinky dings which make it really hard to find keycap sets. If you get this board, please please make sure your keycaps fully support the layout. My set didn't so I had to get a bit creative with it. The stabs included with the board are Aqua's double shot plate mounts. They're pre-lubed out of the box and with an extra layer of 205G0 applied after the fact, they're insanely good. This board does support screw and stabs but honestly just use the plate mounts, they're really good. Alright, let's start the build. As I mentioned before, I added an extra layer of 205G0 to the wires of the included stabs and they're smooth and rattle free. For this build, I'll use the plate foam but not the PE foam. On goes the polycarb plate. This board uses these standoffs and screws to hold the PCB and plate together and I did end up using them. For switches, I'm using the new Akko V3 Cream Yellow Pro switches. I can't lie, these are probably one of, if not the best switches I've ever tried. The long pole creates a super clean and clacky sound, and they're so smooth that even right next to my ear, I can't hear any scratch. I've got to get more of these, man. Akko, if you're watching this, please send me a bunch, I'm gonna use these on like every build. After installing the switches, we can go ahead and screw the assembly into the top case. Then we can just screw the bottom and top pieces together. For keycaps, I'll be using these white on blue keycaps I got on Amazon. As far as I know, they're double shot cherry profile and they use both ABS and PBT, with the legends being ABS and the rest of the keycap being PBT. Since they didn't have split space bars or any of the weird layout stuff really, I had to steal some space bars from another set and I used the function keycap for the tab key, a caps lock keycap on the backspace, and a tab key on the enter key. Yeah, it's, it's pretty scuffed. Anyways, let's hear how it sounds. The sound is really nice. It's nice and clacky, and it sounds very clean if that makes sense. 
The top mount implementation gives the board a very comfortable typing feel with a bit of flex when pressed down. The switches though, they're so good. The bottom mount sound is so clean, they're super snappy, there's no leaf noise or spring crunch, and they literally cost 24 cents a switch. Overall, this board is super cute. If you're looking for an ultra compact keyboard that's not too expensive, the ACR Top 40 might just be your board. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching, and thank you Akko for sending out the parts. See you guys later. Bye!